Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see the second part of the Q&A session in which I will answer your questions. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. I also want to start with wishing all of you a very happy new year. Hopefully 2021 is going to be a lot better than 2020. Fingers crossed. All right, I got a whole bunch of questions. So yeah, I wasn't done uh, last week. So that's why this is gonna be uh, two parts. If you didn't check out part one of the Q&A session, then uh, make sure to check it out on my channel. Um, if I'm uh, pronouncing your name incorrectly, then uh, I apologize. All right, we start with Romaine Henry. How do you select people for your interviews? Does everybody say yes when you ask them? Um, I'm pretty picky when it comes to the, the people that I want to interview. The reason for that is because it's a lot of work, you know, uh, I have to, uh, yeah, I have to make sure that I have enough information, that the, the track that I'm talking about is interesting enough. So yeah, usually I select tracks that I like a lot myself. Um, yeah, I always talk about like a big classic or like a big hit from, from the past. So yeah, I'm not really focusing on like new uh, tracks. So um, yeah, usually it's tracks from like the 80s or the 90s or the early zeros. Um, and then I want to know the story behind it. So I also check if the track uh, has been like successful or has been a hit in at least several countries. I think my top five uh, viewers on YouTube are people from the USA, the UK, Australia, uh, Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands. So yeah, that's why I'm not picking tracks that were only hits in the Netherlands because then it's not interesting for uh, for the rest of the world. So yeah, that's a bit how I select the tracks. Also, of course, the person has to be available and interested. Um, I mean, there are a few people that I would love to talk to, but yeah, they don't speak English or Dutch. So yeah, that's already, uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen, of course. Um, Okay, right now we're in, in the middle of a pandemic. But before that, I always used to check which concerts and festivals and DJ gigs were here. So yeah, if an artist from abroad was coming to the Netherlands, for example, like during the summer season where we have like a lot of festivals or during the Amsterdam dance event, you know, then you get people from all around the world flying into the Netherlands. So that's when I try to get like the names that don't live in the Netherlands. But yeah, for now I can only do interviews with people that are based in the Netherlands. I cannot even go to Belgium or Germany right now. I live in the south of the Netherlands. I live like 30 minutes away from the border of Germany and Belgium. So if I would drive to Antwerp, that would take me like an hour. And Dusseldorf in Germany is also like an hour. I live in, 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 in the Eindhoven area, something like that. Um, so yeah, for now I can only focus on people that live in the Netherlands. I don't want to do interviews like uh, online, like via Zoom or Skype. I think the results are much better when you have like a face-to-face -face interview. Plus like yeah, the whole technical stuff with doing Zoom interviews and everything. Yeah, that's it's just not for me. But I'm lucky that I live in the Netherlands because we have so many people here that did like amazing tracks. So yeah, the only thing is like, yeah, the pandemic makes things a little bit more difficult. But uh, yeah, at least there's still stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, hopefully it will stay like this and hopefully it will go even better and better. And um, yeah, once the pandemic is like over and once we get like gigs again, I have several people already that said yes when I approached them for an interview. So yeah, hopefully there will still be a lot more to come. Oh yeah, the, the reason that I'm also, that I'm picky is also, uh, if I do an interview about a track that was just like a like a small tiny hit or a bit more underground track the amount of views is not as much as when I do it about a big classic and since these interviews really take a lot of time and energy um, I decided to focus on the tracks that 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 I know that the, the 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 vlogs will get like a lot of views because yeah otherwise I feel that it's a bit of a waste of my time and trust me I spend a lot of time on the interviews so yeah <clears throat> I also have no travel budget for these vlogs, so uh, that's why, you know, uh, yeah, usually I try to go once a year, I try to go to, uh, to a city abroad, I mean I did a trip to London in 2000, 
uh, was it 2019? Yeah, 2019. There I did several interviews with people that live in and around London. Uh, in 2020, I went to Frankfurt in Germany, which is about like a three hour drive. I spent three days there and I recorded several interviews. So yeah, usually I try to do something like that once a year. But yeah, so that means for the interviews, I can only interview people that are living near me or people that visit the Netherlands. But yeah, since we're in a pandemic right now, there are no gigs, no events, nothing. So yeah, that's why I can only focus on the, on the Dutch people. Um, Sayed Safan is asking, how do you find or get in contact with the producers you interview? Um, I, in my previous uh, Q&A, I already said that because of my work, I, I know quite a lot of people. So yeah, sometimes it's pretty easy for me to get in touch. Um, but yeah, I, I use like Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, the websites of artists usually have like a press contact. So that's how I get in touch with, uh, with people. But not everybody has like a website or is like very active on social media. So sometimes it's a bit more difficult, but then I have some contacts that usually, uh, uh, yeah, that, that will be able to, to get me in touch with the people that I want to talk to. Sayed is also asking me, did you try to reach out to Vincent de Moor? Um, yeah, in the previous Q&A, I also told a bit about Vincent de Moor because he's on top of my wish list. But yeah, Vincent has no social media, no LinkedIn. Um, I spoke to people that used to work with him. Yeah, nobody really knows where he is. So I would love to do an interview with him. If I have his details, I will definitely reach out. I don't expect he will say yes because he's a very private person. But yeah, so far I haven't reached out to him since I have this Music Express vlog. But yeah, if you check the, the, the first part of the Q&A, then, and then you will hear the story about that time that I met Vincent. And then we also spoke about an interview for Trends.nu, which never happened. Damn it. Um, I am Kirk82 is asking, what was your first ever interview? Um, well, if we're not talking about Music Express, my very, very first ever interview was in, I think it was April, April 1995. Then I was working for the local radio station Sirius. And together with my colleague, uh, Robert Harkens, we went to Hilversum to do an interview with Martin Boer. He is one of the two producers of the two brothers on the fourth floor. So um, yeah, we did an interview with him. I still have the cassette tape somewhere, which I'm probably gonna edit uh, in, in this vlog right now, so you can see it. I actually uh, spoke to Martin on Facebook, and hopefully later this year, I'm gonna do another interview with him. So yeah, my very first interview is like more than 25 years ago, 1995. The first interview I did for Music Express, that was when I went to Los Angeles. There I spoke with Felix, who is responsible for the massive classic, Don't You Want Me? I wanted to do a vlog about that track because I really, really like that track. Um, I knew F Felix was from London, but I think like three weeks or two weeks before I was going to LA, I found out he was living in LA. So I managed to track him down. I emailed his manager. Felix himself emailed me back and he was very enthusiastic, super nice guy. And that was my first interview for Music Express. Um, I was very nervous because yeah, this was the first interview that I was doing like on camera. So, you know, I had to check out the stuff like with the microphones and the sound. I didn't even have lights back then, so it looks a bit dark. But overall, I'm still super happy with that one because yeah, massive track. And it's the only video interview with Felix, which is online. So yeah, I'm very proud about that one. So check it out. Um, okay, this is a difficult one to pronounce the name GWEM GW Embassy. Yeah, he's he he is probably laughing. Who was the most difficult person to arrange an interview with? Um, well, to be honest, nobody has been really like difficult. I had a few people that said no, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, most people are like quite easy to find, like you know, via social media or LinkedIn or via their websites. Even people such as uh, Maxi Jazz or Jean Michel Jarre. I wasn't expecting anything back. And especially because in the early days I had like maybe a thousand, two thousand subscribers, which is like not much. So no, so yeah, I was like not expecting to get an answer back. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, they emailed me back and they were all like, okay, let's do it. So I was like, okay, wow. Um, there have been some people that have, have been on my wish list for like a long time. Uh, you know, sometimes it takes like longer. I had people that I 
ask like, okay, can we do an interview? And that, that took like five, six, seven months, you know. It can be different things, of course. People are working on an album or they're like rebuilding their studio or they have some personal stuff going on. Uh, there are still people that I spoke to like maybe two years ago that I still haven't interviewed yet. But yeah, hopefully it's gonna happen uh, this year. So yeah, so far nobody has been really like super difficult to, uh, to, uh, yeah, to contact. Jerjo Nemet is asking, what was the hardest Music Express vlog episode to manage? Um, yeah, also that wasn't really one that was like, like super difficult or whatever. But I think the most challenging was when I was in London in 2019. I was only there for several days. So I had to try to get as much interviews uh, scheduled as possible. So I remember when I, when I arrived, I first I got to visit Lange. I did two interviews with him. The day after, that was a very that was a very busy day. Then I started with an interview with uh, Adamski about Killer. Um, then I traveled to the studio of Darren Tate. I sat down with him for two interviews. Then Steve Jones from the from the Space Brothers picked me up. Then we went to their studio where I spoke to Steve and Ricky. Uh, there I did three interviews with interviews with them. So that was a total of six interviews in one day. And yeah, I was like so tired at the end of the day. It was like, you know, like traveling a lot and you know, uh, yeah, you still have to focus on, on everything. And, and yeah, that was a very long day, but I'm still super happy that I managed to, to interview all of them. And I'm very happy still with all, all the results. Next question comes from Dry Desert. Uh, what songs or tracks made you become interested in electronic music? Um, yeah, I started listening to the radio at the end of this end of the 80s, yeah, 86, 87. And then later you got like, I think it was 88, 89. You got like more the house music. So tracks such as uh, Team from S Express by S Express, uh, Mars, Pop Up the Volume, Technotronic, Pump Up the Jam. Um, then I started like buying like uh, CDs and stuff like that. Uh, then we got this compilation series in the Netherlands turn up the bass and they had like all these tracks that were being played in the clubs and stuff like that yeah techno house rave uh, so yeah that's those are like the first tracks that were like uh, yeah dance music like uh, related sound puzzles how many records and cds do you have there in the background um i think i said it in the first q a as well i think i think it's a bit 50 50 i think in total i have like twenty thousand records and cds so yeah, these are the CDs upstairs in my music room. I have more CDs, uh, but yeah, I think it's like 10,000 records and 10,000 CDs, something, something like that. The next question comes from Rolf26. What was your first ever concert or festival? Uh, my first ever concert was in September 1996. That was in the Amsterdam Arena, which these days is called the Johan Cruyff Arena. That was the Michael Jackson uh, concert, the history tour. My first ever festival was in, I think it was June or July maybe. Anyway, the summer of 1999, the Rock Werchter Festival in Belgium in uh, the city of Werchter. Um, yeah, massive lineup, people such as uh, Fateless, Metallica, Lenny Kravitz, uh, Marilyn Manson, Brian Adams. Um, I've been to Rock Werchter at least five times and yeah, that's an amazing festival. Cesar Pantoja. I would love to know about your story with music. What age did you start listening? Yeah, 86, 87, 1986, 1987. Um, I started listening to music on my parents' radio. Uh, later I got like cassette tapes, so I was like recording the music that I, that I liked a lot. A few tracks that I still remember that I was enjoying a lot back then. That was uh, Don't Leave Me This Way by the Communards, Walk Like an Egyptian by the Bangles, and um, yeah, George Michael and Aretha Franklin, I knew you were waiting for me. And I know like, yeah, I like the music of George Michael, Michael Jackson. Um, I can't really remember if I was already listening to Prince back then. Yeah, George Michael, Michael Jackson, Terence Strand Darby, he had some super cool stuff as well. I wonder what happened to him, by the way. So yeah, 86, 87, that was the time that I started like listening to, uh, to music. Federico Budassi. I would like to talk to you about your background, how you started to work with Ferry Corsten. Um, I still remember when I heard like Out of the Blue, 
that was by System F, by Ferry. That was like, when I heard that track, I was like, wow, what is this amazing track? I did local radio back then already. So I managed to find Ferry's uh, email address. <clears throat> I still remember it, it's not in use anymore. It was dance therapy productions at compuserve.com. That's like this email. So yeah, I emailed Ferry, I got a reply that was not a joke on April 1st, 1999. Uh, because I sent him like an interview request for like my for like the radio show that we were doing and he said like yeah it's a complete madhouse over here so yeah let's check in the near future if we if we can do it um, I think it still took like two three years before I did my interview with Ferry which was for trans.new in Ferry's old studio I think around the same time yeah 1999 2000 I made no it was 1999 I, I now I remember uh, Ferry had no website yet so uh, I made this uh, yeah I made this website. I'm not like a website builder or designer. So it was like a bit uh, like an amateur would do. But yeah, I had like a lot of info. And then in, I can't remember which year. Yeah, 16 years ago. Then I got contacted by Ferry's, uh, Ferry's wife, who's working for him as well. And she asked me like, yeah, what's your job? What are you doing? And then she called me back like a week later, like, do you want to come work for us? Well. That was that was not a difficult question to answer. So yeah, I said yes. So yeah, that's how I started to work uh, with Ferry. And in the beginning, I maintained the official Ferry Corson website. I wrote like news items, newsletters. Uh, he had a forum which I maintained. Uh, then I started working for the record company Flashover Recordings as well. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how it started. DJ Hey Official, aka Header. She is asking. Have you thought about possibly coming out with Music Express merchandise, like t-shirts or coffee mugs? Well, I'm wearing this uh, Mu Music Express polo, thanks to Tunewear. Um, I really wonder if there are like enough people uh, that would be interested in buying like merchandise. If you like Music Express merchandise, just like leave a comment in the, like, in the comment section. And if there are enough people, I will see what I can do. But yeah, I'm not like a famous person or like a band or an, an actor or artist, so... I don't really think uh, it will ever happen, but then again, never say never. Heather is also asking me, is there anyone who inspired you to start vlogging? Um, I mean, if you're talking about like an inspiration for me, there's this Dutch guy, he, his name is Leo Blockhuis. He's doing a lot of amazing interviews with like all kinds of artists. He spoke to, yeah, too many people to mention. Um, uh, he's doing like these mini documentaries about an artist or like a track. It's in all kinds of genres. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm a big fan of his stuff. He, he wrote a lot of books as well. I'm not much of a reader, but I think I have all of his books. So uh, yeah, Leo Blockhuis. Uh, check out his channel. I will probably like leave it somewhere in the, in the comments. Destination Unknown is asking, what is your best, most funny or most notable clubbing experience? I wrote them down because otherwise I will forget. Um, in 1999, I went to uh, Hugo D. Knight in Rotterdam. That was a party in the Ahoy over there. Uh, Fateless was there, Groove Armada, a whole bunch of DJs. Um, so yeah, that was my first big event. And yeah, I, we went there with a couple of friends. Yeah, that was really cool. That was a fun one. Um, my first Trans Energy, that was uh, Trans Energy in 2002. Blank and Jones were there, Dumonde, Cosme Gate, Bart Klaassen, uh, Rank 1. Um, yeah, that was also amazing. That was like my first big trance event. Um, then in 2002 as well, I went to Club O in The Hague. That was, uh, I think it was the second ever Armin only set. Armin did play like a 12 hour set. Amazing, yeah, that was, that was super cool. I think I've been to Club O twice. Also one time when Paul van Dijk was playing. So yeah, that were some of my first like uh, trans events. Then of course, May 2003, Tiesto in concert. The very first Tiesto in concert in the Helge Dome in Arnhem. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you like trans, I'm sure you've seen the, the DVD and the footage online. And yeah, that's, I will never ever forget that one. Andrew U Hudak. Sorry, Andrew, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. What is your most desirable vinyl you just cannot, cannot get anywhere? Um, well, there are a few that I probably can get somewhere, but they are like super expensive and yeah, I don't really feel like spending that much money uh, on, on those records yet, unless I win the lottery, which is probably not going to happen. Um, 
I'm still looking for like an original pressing of the first Rebirth by Jones and Stephenson. Uh, there are some other bonsai vinyls that uh, that I'm still having on my wish list. Uh, some Arjuna Beats records like uh, Sun and Moon, that that vinyl with the remixes, and uh, On a Good Day, Metropolis, the the mashup Garrett Emery uh, with Above and Beyond. Yeah, that one is very expensive as well, and that's definitely on my wish list as well. The next question, uh, low tree frequency music. Do you have any dodgy or questionable music that you still like in your collection? I have a lot of that in my collection. Uh, I have a lot of Eurodance that people might think is very cheesy. Uh, but yeah, I have stuff from Aqua, the Rednecks, the Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Hanson, uh, Julio Iglesias. I'm a big fan of the Pet Shop Boys. Some people always say, also say like, yeah, the Pet Shop Boys. But yeah, I love the Pet Shop Boys. So yeah, stuff like that. Oh yeah, Scooter, of course, and, the, and even the Spice Girls. Yeah, don't laugh. Um, Sylvie0991, have you ever thought about publishing a book with interviews? Um, well, I prefer to do this, like video interviews, um, because I think if you write a book, I have like zero experience like with the whole book industry and stuff like that and i guess i have to ask permission to everyone again and and management and i think it's i i'm not sure but because i don't know anything about it but i think it would be pretty complicated plus what i like about like doing the videos here like on, on youtube you know you get like instant feedback uh, if you write a book yeah there's not really I mean, of course, there will always be people like, oh, I wrote your book and it's, uh, it's like, uh, I read, sorry, I read your book and it's really good and I like it and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I, I, I like the instant feedback that you can get like in the, in the comments. So yeah, I don't think there will ever be a book. But then again, never say never. Hernan Diaz, do you remember your first ever record? Yes, my first ever record on vinyl was uh, Michael Jackson, Dirty Diana, the seven inch single. That must be 87 or 88. Let me ch check. It was on the album Bad. Yeah, 87, 88, something like that. So yeah, that was my very, very first ever vinyl. Christian is asking, which do you prefer? Old school trance or old school techno? Um, yeah, old school trance for sure then. He's also asking, do you have some old school Goa trance in your collection? And if so, what are your favorite tracks? I don't really think I have a lot of Goa trends in my collection. I think the most trends stuff that I have is like Solar Stone, Lanch, Mad Derry, Rank One, Ferry, Armin, Chesto, Vincent de Moor, um, yeah, Cosmic Gay, Du Monde. I think I think from those artists I have quite a lot. I have like compilations, you know, like the Magic series from Tiesto. Uh, yeah, that that that, that kind of stuff. Cheeky Bricky is asking, out of all the dance music labels, which one is your personal favorite and inspires you the most? That's a very difficult question because I have so many labels that I really like. Uh, Tsunami Records, Bonsai, Hooch Tunes. Um, yeah, the more house related is like Cheeky Records. Uh, but yeah, Lost Language. Uh, the IDNT had like a lot of amazing stuff. Did I mention Bonsai already? I'm not sure. But yeah, there's. Platypus, of course. It's really difficult to just pick one. So these are like my favorite labels from uh, from back in the day. Ed Brown is asking, who is your musical hero? Well, that's for sure Ben Liebrand. Um, yeah, when I started listening to the radio, I found this program, which was called Curry and Van Inkel on Dutch radio. And every Friday they had someone who came to the studio and made like a mix of a track or like a mashup before it was even called a mashup. His name was Ben Liebrand. Uh, he's still active in the music scene. I also did an interview with him, so check that one out. But I was very, very impressed by his grand mixes. At the end of the year, he took the entire month of December off to make uh, like a year mix. But yeah, keep in mind, back then, uh, you know, that was not like really like a computer or that you could do it like with Ableton or whatever. No, Ben did everything like with, with tape. Uh, so yeah, it was a very time consuming uh, uh, task. And yeah, at the at the end of, of the month, he played like the grand mix of that year. So you could hear like all the tracks of that year in like a one hour long mix. And yeah, I recorded it on my cassette tape and then the entire year, like, you know, you were playing the grand mixes. 
I'm sure that many Dutch people know what I'm talking about. And yeah, so Ben, um, yeah, he was like a pioneer. Amazing guy as well. I'm lucky, lucky enough to have met him like several times. And uh, yeah, if you never heard about him, you should definitely check him out and maybe check on YouTube for some of his old grand mixes because they're like, yeah, they're like top notch. And the last question from Jonas Steur and a whole bunch of other people. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes, I'm a big fan of pineapple uh, on pizza. I know there are a lot, there are like a lot of people that really hate it, but uh, yeah, no, I'm a big fan of it. And this whole thing started, you know, because I usually end my interviews with this question. It's a bit of a silly question, but it's uh, you, you get some funny reactions sometimes. Um, how this started was, um, we were working in the office, we were like working late, so we did order food, which was became pizzas. I did order a pineapple pizza, and my colleague was like, uh, how can you eat this? It's like disgusting, blah, blah. So I took a picture of my pizza, posted it on my personal Facebook, and I don't think I ever got so many replies to a, uh, to a picture ever. So then I said as a joke, like, oh, maybe I should uh, ask this in my, Music Express interviews, you know, like pineapple on pizza, yes or no. And so many people said like, yes, do it, do it. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do it a few times. And then, yeah, I'm still doing it because I think it's funny and a bit silly, but yeah, sometimes you get like really funny reactions. So uh, yeah, that's the whole story behind the pineapple on pizza thing. That was the last question. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. And maybe I'm gonna do another Q&A at the end of this year. Uh, let's see how it goes. So yeah, thank you so much for uh, for tuning in. If you like the vlog, make sure to click uh, like and uh, leave a comment in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and press the the bell button. Uh, what else? Yeah, also make sure to check out my Patreon page. Like this month, January 2021, I'm giving away a package of 10 signed CDs from people such as uh, Ferry Korste, Sander van Doorn, Kai Tresset, JD, Human Resource, Leon Bolier, Cor Fijneman. I know I will forget, uh, I'm gonna forget a few. But yeah, check out my Patreon page at the end of the month, uh, early February 2021, I'm gonna announce the lucky winner. So you can win 10 signed CDs, this complete package. Check out patreon.com slash music express for all info and uh, maybe you're gonna be the lucky winner. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, thanks again for watching and uh, yeah, until next time, bye bye.